Hi, good day to everybody. We're going to start again. Uh, this time we are going to Italy. But before we go to Italy, we'll go to USA first because we're going to do breadsticks today. I got two recipes for you today, breadsticks. I'm going to do the Italian breadstick later. Uh, and, uh, but first of all, I will demonstrate the American breadstick, which is the US breadstick, which is a bit fatter. Huh? Okay, so the, the American breadstick is actually designed for dipping in soups, for dipping in pasta sauce and all this, right? And it's, got, it's designed to be fairly stiff. It's not the soft Hokkaido bread, you know, the Japanese bread type. It's stiff, it's chewy, it's meant to, to be a dip stick, you know? So I'm going to demonstrate first. So, of course, first of all, let us all measure the water. Okay, uh, if you take a look at your recipe, you realize that it is, uh, we start off with 160 ml of water. Okay, that's water. You can use any kind of water. Okay, especially uh, if you're using um, mineral water, that'd be great. Just don't use uh, alkaline water. You know, the, the, the alkalinity will, will change the whole thing. And the next thing you want to put in today, I'm going to use um, garlic butter. If you have attended the last lesson, uh, you will probably have the recipe for this garlic butter. Leftover garlic butter is very useful. It has been in a freezer, so you can use it. Or you can just go outside and buy some garlic butter, right? They come in blocks, right? Anyway, so uh, garlic butter, how many? How much is 25 grams? All right. That is exactly 25 grams of garlic butter. And next thing I'll do is I'm going to use German bread flour. This German bread flour we're using is the one with the 12% protein. Okay, not the 10% but the 12% protein. How much? You got 250 grams of it. So as a, as a reminder to all of you, you are, we are going to use a machine so the, the liquid goes in first before the dry, dry ingredients, right? Okay, then the next thing that going go in first, we are going to use Sienna, spring, uh, spring Sienna. This has a very, very nice sour, aromatic and uh, it's got kind of a um, multi flavor, so I like it. I can smell it here right now as I open it, I can, it's going in my face. We're gonna use seven grams of it. That's about seven grams. Let me put seven grams of this. Okay, this is about seven grams. Okay, seven grams of sienna, which is a very aromatic um, sour. That's sienna over here. It's called spring sienna. And then we're gonna put some uh, um, improver. This is uh, Domino Vert. This Domino Vert is an improver. It contains um, enzymes, natural enzymes. There's no chemical improver inside. It's natural enzymes and it's got vitamin C. We call it ascorbic acid inside the ingredient. It's, uh, it's stated right over here. It's very clear. All right, how many grams? We're going to put five grams of it. Just five grams will do. Follow the weight of the yeast that you, you put inside. You put 10 grams yeast, you put 10 grams of yeast, right? Of, of this uh, Domino Verde, which is actually an improver. And then you put your instant yeast, of course, our very famous uh, angel yeast. There must be a reason why they call it angel. And I repeat, the reason why we, I like angel yeast is because uh, it's individually vacuum packed. Right, so it's, uh, it'll last a lot longer. How many grams? We got five grams of it. Five grams of angel yeast. Yes, that would be five grams. And because it's an aluminum container, I'm gonna fold it and I keep it back here for the next use. If you're not gonna use it for days, please put it in the freezer. It will last longer. Not the fridge, but the freezer. Okay, what's next? Uh, after the instant needs, we got fine sea salt. Five grams of the sea salt, I'm gonna put it at the side. What we don't do is we don't put it onto the yeast itself, right? We put it at the side. Five grams of sea salt and uh, Okay, this is when I put it for kneading, all right? So what we're gonna do is gonna put it into the machine here. Okay, so this thing is ready for kneading. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna lift it up like this and I'm gonna go on slow. First three minutes go on the first speed, slow speed, right? If you do fast, boof, your whole face off flat. Okay, while that is happening, I will measure. I will measure 20 grams of Sunflower and cereal. Okay, 20 grams of sunflower cereal. This is a very important component for this. We want this particular recipe to have a good mouthfeel, right? Mouthfeel. So we want to put all this inside. Uh, it's supposed to be mouthfeel. It's, it's got some seeds. 
and it's very uh, it's very nutty by nature. So I put 20 grams of this. Okay, that's about it. 20 grams, and we're gonna put it separately. Then we're gonna increase the speed by a little bit so that it needs. Okay, let it need a bit more. Sometimes, uh, depending on the, the flour you have in your country or your place, sometimes it can be a bit dry and, and uh, feel free to add in a little bit more water here and there, you know, so that it doesn't become too dry. But this one looks okay. Okay, so what is the purpose of this kneading? I'm going to knead, I'm going to let the dough has a chance to form the gluten first. Because when you put in this uh, sunflower and seal, it does not form the gluten very well. So I'm going to let it knead for a while, let the gluten have a chance to get to know each other, you know, form a gluten. Then I'm going to add this in slowly, so that it forms a dough. If not, you'll be kneading for over an hour and still it doesn't come together, right? Okay, so you just go for 10 minutes. First 3 minutes slow, let it come into a, a dough form and if you can see that it's already in a, in a dough form, it's not really sticking to the wall of the, of the bowl, you can start putting this in. Okay, which is just about right now. Okay, so I'm going to put the sunflower and cereals in. Actually, it's very flexible. You want to use cereals, you want to use um, cereals and um, soya. It's perfectly fine. I, I kind of like this one because it gives a very nutty thing and it's got um, linseed and everything, sunflower seed. It just gives you a very satisfying bite to the whole thing, right? While this thing is kneading, I'm going to invite Dolphy here, who is my... Uh, oven operator, <laughs> uh, she's going to help uh, do a half an hour uh, preheat of the oven at 200 degrees. Okay, For this recipe, I need the oven to be really hot because uh, the Italian bread stick, I need it to be crispy. Okay, you're almost done. You can check the dough. How do you check the dough? By shutting it off down and touching it. It's tacky but it doesn't stick to the finger. It's tacky, it doesn't stick the finger. That's it, it's done. Doesn't stick, right? And I'm just gonna... I'm just gonna... put some oil here so it doesn't stick. Right here. At this point of time, there's no need for you to do the window paint test and all this. Once you... The very moment you put inside the to, to let it rise for half an hour, it will form the gluten and you can do a window pin test later. Okay? So I'm gonna put this in for half an hour in our in our prover. If you don't have a prover, put it somewhere warm, coat it, cover it with plastic or a coat a layer of oil, you can you can rise it for half an hour. Just half an hour, alright? The dough for the uh, American breadstick is ready. It's very nice, it's very soft if you notice, it's risen. So what we're going to do, we're going to do forming now. Forming the dough, got to listen very carefully, there's a certain way of forming it. And we're going to put cheese inside this, we're going to put some cheese inside. This is cheddar cheese, this is kind of a processed cheddar cheese where we put inside. This kind of cheese, this kind of cheese does not melt so much in, uh, in oven heat. So when it doesn't melt, it doesn't spill out. So you gotta find something that does not spill out. And it's actually called processed cheese, which is made of palm oil inside there. Eh? Okay, if you use ordinary cheese, it's gonna burst. So we're gonna put some cheese inside there. Uh, flour. Okay, in American, they call it flour. In US, we call it flour. Okay, so if it's, is it flour, is it flour, it's both, it's correct. Because in, in Singapore, you say flour, the fellow will give you a stick of flour, you know? Rolls and everything, but in US, it's called flour. So, put on some flour, we're going to roll it, we're going to coat it with a layer of powder, like this so it doesn't stick, okay? Now, the, the, the shaping is very, very critical, listen carefully, listen carefully. We, we want something narrow like this and long, okay? So later, when you shape it, it doesn't become too long, okay? So we're going to have it narrow, we're going we're gonna to pull it out this way. To about... Three to five millimeters thick will do, okay? Like this. Just remember, this breath should not be too wide. I need a long rectangular. Okay, that's the that's the whole thing. Because later, when you shape it, it gets longer and longer. It becomes too long. Okay, I'm gonna make it into a kind of a rectangle like this. 
Yes. Can you see it's a narrow rectangle? Well, of course, it's a bit too thick, so I'm going to pull it some more. I'm going to pull it some more. A little bit more. Okay, like this. And I'm going to form it into a rectangle. Like this. Okay, this width is just about right. It's just about right for, um, it's just about the size of a palm. Not any longer. Once you have it any longer, you're going to have difficulty shaping it, okay? Okay, the next thing you want to do, you want to cut it into pieces. Okay. This one you don't have to weigh, it's a breadstick. What goes in disappears, alright? So you're gonna, I'm gonna cut it into equal pieces like this. First I have it, then I cut it into one third, one third, like this. Okay, I have it again, I, I do one third, third. Something like this, alright? Then I'll, I'll cut it into pieces. And every piece will be a breadstick. So if you find that this one is a bit too thick, you cut it away. And then you, one, two, three, four, five, six. You distribute among them. Huh? Like that. Okay, so how do you shape this? Very important. I'm going to move this aside so that the camera can see it. How do you shape it? Very simple. It's a rectangular piece. You push and make a little drainage in the middle, like this. In the middle, like this. Huh? Then you take your cheese. You can use any cheese, but try and use the cheese as processed with um, vegetable oil. In this case, this is palm oil from Malaysia. Um, if, you, if you don't, you use the, the the usual cheese, what happens is it's going to produce a lot of gas and it's going to burst the bread open. Okay? And that's uh, troubling for, for bakers. It's troubling to burst the bread. Because this one is in pieces, so it's a little difficult to um, control, but we can manage. Okay. Now you want, to, you want to make it into a long dough. All you need to do is to put together and pinch it together. That's it. Nothing to it. Just pinch it together. Pinch it together. Like this. You notice it gets longer and longer later when you when you turn it around like this and you start rolling it, it gets a bit longer. So therefore your width, you don't go and do too too wide a width is a problem then. Alright, make sure it's sealed so that the cheese does not come out, although it doesn't melt totally. But it's important to do that. You can use cheddar, the sharp ones. Uh, try not to use those cheese they are they are very big and melting, you know. Try and use cheddar, something sharp. That's it. That's a stick. That's an American stick. So we have done all the um, all the shaping. All we need to do is let it rise for half an hour before you bake it. And uh, to prevent it from, you can you can do a few things. You can uh, cover with a piece of plastic wrap, or you can simply just spray with some oil here so that it prevents from uh, drying up like this. And just leave it at the corner, you will rise for half an hour and then uh, we bask it and we can bake it, right? So I'm going to put it aside. So I'm going to simply, this baking uh, requires a two process baking. Uh, it's risen ready. I'm going to coat it with a layer of egg for the shine, uh, egg and milk. I'm going to put in for about eight minutes, take out, coat it a layer of uh, oil and then put in all the sprinkles I want to put on top and then bake it and for 3 minutes and it's done, okay? So this is the first coat. We're waiting for that one to happen. I'm going to go through the first coat. Okay. Alright, so what we're going to do, we're going to do the Italian breadstick, breadstick. Very thin, very crispy, very nutty. Alright, again, we're going to do this. We're going to measure up the um, water. The recipe is almost the same, except for a few variations. Alright, so first of all, we also have 160, 160 uh, grams of water. 160 uh, grams of water. 
And this time, instead of using garlic butter, we're going to use extra virgin olive oil. How much of it? 25 milligrams of it. Milligrams, grams, not milligrams. 25 grams of extra virgin olive oil. 25 grams, and we are at 25 grams. Okay, great. So extra virgin olive oil will be very nice. And the next thing we need to put in is 210. This one is not 250, 210 grams of German bread flour. 210 grams, which I measured earlier. And then we'll put uh, seven grams of sienna, spring sienna, again, sour, nutty, fragrant. Seven grams. Okay, there we is, there's seven grams of it. I'm gonna put it back. And what's next is, um, of course, our five grams of angel yeast. This time I'm not using Domino Vert because I'm not looking for a soft bread, I'm looking for a crispy one, right? So five grams of angel yeast. Okay, that's five grams. A little bit left. This is about 11 grams a packet, so it's, there's probably one gram still inside, hanging there, inside there. All right. And then uh, we got five grams of salt, which I will go, I'm going to put at the side. Five grams of salt at the side. There we go. And what next is uh, sunflower and cereals again. I have measured 50 grams. This time is 50 grams on sunflower and cereals. So uh, I'm going to knead this again and I'm going to put this in slowly, right? Okay, let's put back into the machine. Slow, three minutes. Just leave it, let it go slow for three minutes. And uh, then we will uh, spoon in this a little bit at a time. All right, so the, uh, if you can see, the gluten is almost forming pretty, pretty nicely already. I'm gonna start gonna spoon this a teaspoon at a time on a sunflower and cereal so that it does not disrupt the formation of the gluten. But first of all, I'm gonna lower the speed to speed number two so it doesn't throw back into your face, you know? All right. And all we need to do now is wait for it to absorb the whole thing in. We can take out for first rising. All right. It's done. All right. And the next thing you need to do is to um, plop the face of the table. Okay, form into a round ball. This is a bit sticky, yeah, this dough, like this. And as I form the round ball, I can feel the, the linseed, the sunflower seed on it, no? And uh, what you do is you leave it to rise for half an hour, it's the same, leave it to rise for half an hour. Okay, we are ready for shaping the Italian breadsticks, okay? How's the shaping done? We shape it, we cut it, we shape it. We we'll leave it to settle down for five minutes and we can bake it immediately. That's why the oven is preheating right now. So, first of all, some flour as usual onto the table. And then we put the whole dough on the table here like this. It doesn't stick. Okay. Again, shaping this is technique. That's all the width you, you require. You don't, need, you don't need any longer than that. Okay, because as you shape, it gets longer and longer, okay? So I'm gonna make sure that it doesn't stick at all by coating it with a layer of flour, all right? Okay, then when I shape it, I just go it sideways like this. The difference between this one and the American breadstick is you roll it much thinner, about three millimeters or five millimeters at the most, in terms of thickness, all right? And I'm gonna Hold the width down. I will be controlling the width. I want it to go wide, all right? I'll be controlling the width. Like this, I'll be, I want it long. And thin. Okay, again, controlling the width. Thin and long, pulling it. This way and that way. This is going to produce a lot of sticks. I think you can feed the whole company with this. You know, just smelling this thing, having baked it, is already very, very uh, nutty already. 
Control, again, control. Here's the keyword, control the width. Make it long. So what I'm going to do, we're going to have two little flavors here. Uh, we've got some flower seeds right across, across with cereal. I'm going to make half of this as with sesame seed upon the request of the producer. Sesame seed half. Okay, now I'm going to cut it. Ready? The cutting of this is very simple. Okay, you cut into small slices like this. Can you see it? Next thing you do is you pull it out like this and you start rolling it from the center. You start rolling it from the center. How do you roll it from the center? You take this and you twist. And you twist. And you twist. And you twist. And as you twist, it gets longer and longer and longer. Can you see that? And then gum gum. So the, uh, the dough has gone through half an hour of rising and immediately we sprinkle it, we decorate it and then we, we show you how to twist the whole thing into a breadstick. Notice how thin it is. So now I'm going to put inside the oven that has been uh, preheated for half an hour or more at 200 degrees. How much time do we bake inside there? 10 to 15 minutes. Why is there a range? It depends on your oven, it depends on the condition of the dough at the time. What you do is you bake until it becomes crispy, that's it. Alright, some oven, after a while, is still not crispy. If this one is not crispy, it doesn't work. Okay, I'm going to put it in the oven. Right. And check whether it's crispy enough. If it's crispy enough, we're done. If not, we'll put it back into the oven again. How to check? Very simple. Okay. Some of them are still a bit soft because they're a bit thick. We're going to put it inside there for two more minutes and then we're done. Just two more minutes. Okay, so now we set again. Okay. Ah, now the toast looks pretty good. The toast looks pretty good. Okay, let's take a look at it. Not bad. Oh, some of them are really crispy. So, once you leave it in the air to cool, it will crisp up even further. Although, when you take it out first, it looks a bit soft. It feels a bit soft. But you leave it for a while, you'll crisp up. The, the drier it is, the longer you will last in the pantry, okay? 